live. Yeah, you are now live. Oh, we're live. We're on. All right, guys. Welcome to Bike Beers and Bros, episode one. This is the test run, so I guess it's episode 0.1. Yeah. All right. Rough draft. Yep. Here would be Big Sagat. Luke Kites. Luke Kites. So today, we're just going to be talking, shoot the shit. Talking about bike scene in Houston, bike infrastructure, enjoying some beer. We're here live at the Craft Beer Cellar. Before we even get into that, I'm having a yellow rose. And what are you having? I said that's a four to five board. Mm, okay. So again, that's Craft Beer Cellar downtown. We decided that we were going to talk about social rides. Yeah. Interesting topic. <laughs> so I personally hate the direction that social rides are going right now. I hate it, hate it, hate it with the passion. Why are you hating the social rides? Um, Give me I, one reason. I feel like it's lost its essence. Like I think right now everybody feels so determined to do social rides that it, it lost the fun, it lost the joy. Everybody's overcomplicating, overthinking routes. Um, they're overcomplicating the routes, overthinking the midpoints. It's just, it's not fun anymore. Like we used to ride bikes, stay in shape, have some fun with our friends. Now it's about stunning. And not just the Willie kids, but like stunning. Like like everybody's out just kind of to be seen instead of to enjoy the moment. I agree with a lot of what you're saying in terms of a lot of people out there are stunning. I mm -hmm. see that all the time on social rights. But my point of view is I want the community to grow. So if that means food just arrived, so if that means uh, people want to come out and stunt, well, that's fine for them. I'm not the type of person that will be out there stunting. But yeah. that way, in general, movement I want to push is bicycle awareness. Yeah. Right? So more social rides for me is better than less. Well, and see, and I agree with the more rides part. And, and when I say stunning, yeah, it's a lot of regular people too, but I mean, even the ride leaders, like, you can't, like, bicycle awareness kind of gets hindered when people come out and try several rides and have horrible experiences because either the midpoint's too long or you're taking a thousand people on like eight bottlenecks so you're walking your bike just as much you are riding it or like that kind of stuff like you i don't know but it's they're overthinking everything like everybody wants to be the cool hip ride but to be the cool hip ride you kind of have to ride and you know stop overthinking things like let it flow um you're you got a lot of good points, and I agree with you on um, a lot of those points. Uh, I think in the past, there was a lot of different smaller social rides, mm -hmm. and the logistics of bigger rides, I'd imagine, are a nightmare. I've led some rides, and mm -hmm. yeah, they can stress you out trying to lead mm -hmm. some of those rides. So, uh, yeah, there's the older rides that have gone away we have a lot of newer rides which was something else we were going to talk about mm -hmm. uh, i've seen a big spurt growth in people that ride bmx bikes yeah bmx boom is big very big and not to hate on the bmx boom but but that's kind of something else like i i like bmx just like everybody else but guys BMX, big gear, road bike, all of y'all. We gotta stop like with the, I saw something I thought it was cool on Instagram, so now I'm gonna go out and do it too. Like the wheelies in the traffic because it's cool when they do the mob rides in New York. The fixie skids just because because it, it look cool when they're bombing hills in, in San Francisco. It's when you're putting other people in danger, it's kind of corny. Right. I will never endorse doing stuff that will put yourself or anyone else in mm -hmm. danger. I grew up on BMX bikes. I grew up jumping ramps and going downhill. So I yep. know what the thrill is all about. 
but now I w won't do it and I won't endorse that sort of stuff. So yeah. you definitely have to be very careful if you're doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. And some people will say like, oh, those guys give everyone a bad name. I think each I person, yeah, yeah, I think each person is responsible for themselves. Yeah. So uh, I think it's not a good thing, and I think drivers probably hate that. Yeah. But uh, now I will say, while it doesn't, I don't think it gives like everybody a bad name. I will say it does hinder that progression that we're talking about, like with bicycle awareness and that kind of stuff. When you have somebody completely new that's thinking they're going to get into riding, like just because and then they come out to a ride and you have people like skidding or wheeling like right in front of them and they're like oh my god and like crashing and like those kind of things it doesn't it doesn't make the hobby or sport depending on what you're doing like look the greatest does it give everybody a bad name no no that's no i think it gives the individual rider a bad name now this isn't something we were going to discuss on our, our topic list <laughs> yeah. but get yourself some training go out and practice and talk to people and learn from people because you're right you have yeah. people that will just cut you off mm -hmm. and some of these rides people are drinking quite a bit and mm -hmm. doing other stuff and uh, they'll cut you off and a lot of people they probably don't even know that they're cutting you off they're fast. beginners uh, they're going so fast so yep. you know, learn to pay attention I think that is valuable not only for yourself but the people around yeah. you because people will start to notice who you are and they're not going to like that. Well, and and but also that creates an interesting like paradox because you said like go get some training, but to them that's what they thought they were doing. Like <laughs> they, they went to a beginner ride to get training. Okay. Like so, it, it becomes like hard for them because like yeah yeah they should go get training and they thought they were getting training and then they didn't cut off. Yeah. <laughs> so go to a park. The trail, <laughs> yeah. ride with your by yourself, ride with your other friends. Uh, if you don't have any friends, get on some of the Facebook groups and ask questions so that mm. uh, people with more experience mm. can. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you just hit on the topic right there. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So, if you are one of these new people and you do get on the Facebook groups, for you, I say, have a little bit thick skin because <laughs> it's it might not be the responses might not be exactly what you expect and at the same time for us as like seasoned riders trolling is corny there's a lot Stop of trolling. it like there's it's corny why like why there's you see somebody asking a legit beginner question why what's the point of trolling <laughs> even if it's not a beginner question what's the point of trolling like I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of my notification too, which is why I don't comment on any other groups no more. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna be real. Like I don't comment on any other groups no more because waste of my notification. Like even if I come just to act when I don't troll, come just to, like answer the question, like all that. And then I get several notifications because everybody else just wants to like troll. Like it's it's a waste. Like stop it. Um, so we'll jump into the next topic, which was growth. Pre-pandemic yeah. and post-pandemic. What's your take on that? I think the growth is great. I've, I've been wanting Houston to grow cycling-wise. And everybody always says, like, I'm crazy. And Houston's such a huge cycling city. It's a huge city. It's not a huge cycling city. So I think having that the influx of new riders does help the growth. Thank you. And... Like, so I'm all for it. But the COVID riders have to calm down. Like, the, like, there's nothing worse than, like, we talked about trolls earlier. There's nothing worse than when someone comes into a new hobby and think they know everything. <laughs> Like, not, not saying that I know everything. I don't want to know everything. But come in, be humble. Like I said, like, ask some questions. Don't come in thinking you know everything. Don't come in trying to change the rides. Just, like, you're right off the bat. Like, oh, this is stupid. We shouldn't do this. Like, don't, don't do that. Like, just come in and ride. Ride and enjoy it. Learn. Put some miles in. Like, I've literally had many conversations. Not altercations. 
but conversations with quite a few people that came in thinking they knew a little bit more than they should, or people that just think, like people that come in from like CrossFit or something like that, so they're in shape. So they think they're like ready to ride a little bit heavier of a ride. And then once they get out there, presume to change the whole thing. Why aren't we taking enough breaks? Why are we like, look, you just got here. Learn how things go. And then if you have criticism or whatever, like say it afterwards. Like, I don't know. Well, but, I, I think that's a real good point. You have people that will come in and their personality, let's just say, will take over. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do tend to uh, either, I, the other day, people were drinking way too much yeah. on the ride and being really loud and obnoxious. Uh, so yeah, I can see that. Uh, but back to the uh, growth topic, I think before the pandemic, there was several social rides. And yeah. And um, the big critical mass um, bike ride yeah. um, that we had. But since the pandemic, almost all of the rides were uh, gone. Most yeah. of the leadership was uh, for stopping the rides mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And now we have several new social rides that have popped up. And during the pandemic, we saw a shortage of bicycles that were oh, out yeah. there. You could not find a bike to buy and tire tubes. I, I had trouble finding tire tubes quite a, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah. And that, that was gonna happen. Like, I hope that kind of let everyone know how many parts we're getting from these same companies. Everybody likes to have their brand loyalty and that kind of stuff when all of your bikes are made in the same factory. And when that factory can't ship bikes, none of you get bikes. Like, it's, I don't know, it's it's something. But going back to like the, the post ride, the ride they had before and the ride they have now, two part question. One, are you for, were you for or against like the ride stopping in the first place? And that's actually asking that one first before I go to the first one. Uh, I kept riding. And yeah. if a ride leader decided he didn't want to have his ride, well, mm -hmm. I will respect his decision yeah. 100%. But that doesn't stop me from exactly. riding. Now, I tell, everyone, I tell everyone the same thing. If you're around someone and they're constantly coughing or they look sick, probably want to stay away from that person and uh, yeah that's my take on yeah. it yeah I mean I kept my distance from everybody and I kept riding as well um, I was actually I was for them stopping the rides like I supported their decision um, that better safe than sorry so I definitely supported it I re I didn't realize how big the boom was gonna be like during that time which allowed kind of a lot of inexperienced um, ride leaders to like pop up and get, maybe, I won't say overwhelmed, but a little overwhelmed with the amount of people that they had. Like it's a, it's a big difference when you're riding like with 10 of your friends and now you have to lead 200 people. Yeah, so to some of the people that are new to social rides, definitely do your best to keep up, stay to mm -hmm. the right, those yep. would be tips that I would give. Oh, that most way. definitely. The uh, ride leaders have an easier time coordinate, coordinating the ride. Yep. Um, mine's here drinking too. I mean, I'm not one to like tell anybody what to do with their personal life, but if you can't drink and ride responsibly, then you might want to. <laughs> yep. Talk yeah. about then you might want to like maybe ride towards the back or something because. You're, you have to understand, like, it's not just about you. Right. Like, it's about everybody. Like, we're, when we're out there together, we're out there. One of the, at least for me, I've always felt like one of the primary reasons for social rides was their strength in numbers. That way you don't have as many accidental or intentional, like, car collisions and like that kind of stuff. Like, if there's a bigger people, it's a lot easier to see like easier to avoid, right? Theoretically, um, so yeah. But 
you take that away when you when you're so drunk that you can't ride like now you're you're just as much of a risk to cause damage to one of your fellow riders as a car is so y'all try to keep that in mind like when y'all come out and you drink you ride i mean i drink too but yeah so keep that stuff in mind yeah you can probably get yourself into trouble if you're too drunk while you're on your bicycle oh yes most definitely so I, I wouldn't recommend it yeah you can get um duis while riding a bike so yeah keep and that in mind as well the last i heard those things cost like seventeen thousand dollars yeah i don't know but yeah. uh, it's not worth the risk, <laughs> <not> worth <laughs> the risk. Cost it. yeah and if you're having an issue move over to the right get out of the ride go over to the right so mm -hmm. that the people and the bikes can still flow yes Oh, please, since we're giving corners, please don't stop in the middle of the ride because you dropped your hat or you dropped your phone or anything like that. Pull out. You could still, like, point, let people know, like, that there's something there, but don't stop in the middle because people, you know, people don't pay attention and that kind of stuff, and I would hate for you to get hurt because you want to pick up your hat. Yeah. If, if you haven't noticed, you have people that are using their hands to point, and you have people that are yelling loudly left turn right turn stopping mm -hmm. those are forms of communication mm -hmm. and they're super helpful to everyone around you so learn the lingo and use it exactly yeah. yep oh and while we're talking about that if a car is approaching from the back that's car back don't like i i get it sometimes we're on two lane street if we're in the left lane and the car is approaching from the back on the right side still car back like don't say car right because then you have people looking at the intersection for a car when there's something approaching from the rear and typically when someone is yelling car back that is your heads up to start to move towards the right lane and get mm -hmm. out of the way we do want traffic to keep flowing we don't want to hinder traffic that's not yep. the point of a group ride it's just to bring awareness that bicycles are out there mm -hmm. and we share the road with uh, cars now Speaking of um, blocking traffic, um, that was my second question. So, what do you feel about critical mass? Because for me personally, I have a really strong feeling about the ride. I mean, love the supporters, love everything, love all all the units that come out and all the different people that come out. But for me personally, I think it's run its course. I think it's less awareness and more hindrance now at this point in time i think there are ways that it could be good again like for example critical mass miami which i'm going in gym if you want to go uh yeah that'd be their first their first critical mass back okay they post the route ahead of time so that on their instagram and on everything else so that drivers and everyone knows to you know avoid the area like that kind of stuff versus you know because they're aware of bikers now so now like it's about you know still supporting the community or whatever but we're gonna we're gonna post ahead of time so you know versus now or let's say houston where even me as a biker i get frustrated sometimes when i now have to wait 45 minutes because critical mass happens to be going by like, I feel like there, it wouldn't take much to do that. Like, uh, let's just post the route. The news can shout out. They have a lot of things that really don't need to be on the news anyway. They can shout out what the route is, like, ahead of time. That way, everybody kind of has an idea to know. Yeah, I think that as the ride grows, the logistics get harder and harder yeah. on that sort of ride. And to anyone that's led the critical mass, my hat's off to them. For oh, yeah, wanting to, for sure. Wanting to do that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't necessarily think it's run its course. I think there could be better logistics and planning. Yeah. Like you said. And I've done the critical mass in Los Angeles and in LA. And mm -hmm. they had uh, people wearing yellow vests, so like ride shepherds that oh, yeah. were helping the riders and there was a vehicle following the entire time mm -hmm. behind the ride uh, that was super helpful it was not as big as the one that yeah. happened here but I thought that was really 
helpful to have those people wearing the vest helping coordinate the ride and I think that would be helpful to have here uh, that way there could be some intersections that you know, part of the ride stops yeah and if those ride shepherds know the route we won't have people getting lost like we've, exactly like we've had before so yeah. I think uh, I'd like to see it come back and uh, maybe get some uh, people that would like to lead it and yeah do uh, and work more logistics. yeah work a little bit more on the logistics yeah because that, that would be good too like for example San Antonio has a it's not a critical mass but they had a Tuesday ride that was while I was there I would consider it the closest thing to critical mass there it was like the largest ride um, and it was like that it was a beginner ride it was more about advocacy and for them they stopped at every light like they stopped at every light and the same thing for like if you know the ride's going and they're like they still stopped the sections whatever because they knew the route so they could do now that they stopped if it was a red light yeah 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 okay. yeah so i mean like they didn't run red lights or like that there we go um and yeah and while did it make for a much longer ride yeah but at the same time i think it helps it helped a lot bridge the gap between drivers and and riders like if we show some courtesy you show some courtesy all good yeah I agree. you know i agree 100 percent. people do not need to be jerks while they're on the critical mass and i've, I've mm-hmm. seen that happen i don't know how many rides i've been on yep but, uh, i've seen a lot of people on both sides being jerks yeah. so i would i would highly recommend that uh you keep your attitude and ego in check while you're out there yeah Really on any of the social rides, because I see it way too often. Even on the most recent social ride I was on, um, I'm not gonna ever put anybody out there like that. Well, actually, I would put people out there, but I'm not gonna put them out there on, in this particular moment. Um, but in the most recent social ride I was on, um, a Willy kid, a Willy kid, um, someone had a, a on the bike. Yeah had an altercation with the car like the car ended up bumping him I don't I don't know how he got bumped but ended up bumping him and he proceeded to like go and like you know bang on the, the driver's car or whatever and then it got into like a whole fight and everything like in the middle of the road and people trying to break it up and all I'm thinking the whole time that this is happening is why is this even happening like literally both situations could have been avoided he could have been chilling and riding. The car didn't have to be an asshole and like not play chicken with him, but call his bluff, essentially. Like give the appropriate amount of space when you're passing as a car. And at the same time, be courteous to the car too. There, we can pull over a little bit. Like don't be unsafe. Like cause I'm never gonna ride in the gutter for a car. Sorry for all you car people. I am not gonna ride in the gutter for a car. It's not gonna happen because it's too much debris and the gutters. If you want me to run the gutter for a car, call your local official and tell them to clean up the, the street <laughs> because I'm not doing it. Too much glass. Um, but, you know, like we can both give and take right. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. What do we got next on there? Just if people want to come out and join. Oh, yeah. So if you guys want to come out and join, there is literally a social ride every day of the week. Um, do your due diligence actually go and read up on the rides read up the comments take the negative comments with a grain of salt because there's a lot of negative nancies um, understand what a ride is I personally stopped leaving rides because I don't like complainers like I'm very upfront if I'm leading the ride I do silly pop-ups if I'm leading the ride I tell you exactly what it is from jump so most rides are like that like they're gonna be straight up with you they might not tell you where you're going because there's a whole different reason for that but do read up on the ride understand what you're signing up for try your best and that's all people really ask for on ride bikes more uh, i typically will post uh, whatever social ride is happening if i can if they send it over to the, yeah. uh, the account 
And yeah, if you get in touch with whoever is doing their ride, most of the time they're happy to talk to you about it mm -hmm. beforehand, so you can do that. I also recommend the Critical Mass Facebook page, Critical Mass Houston Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And if you just ask, you know, hey, what rides are happening this week, someone will answer you. You yeah. might get some trolls, but yeah. someone will answer you as well on there, so you can come out and enjoy. Yep. Oh. Also, I mean, yeah, we're gonna keep going with this, but also keep in mind, this is gonna be the probably the most, because it's the intro, the most organized version of this conversation that we're ever gonna have. <laughs> like, you know, not like it's literally we're gonna shoot the shit, like really shoot the shits. Um, I am gonna put some people out there. Um, <laughs> we're probably gonna have a few more beers, you know. For sure. Like, just keep that in mind, like. It, it'll be a, a vibe. It's gonna be a vibe. Well, I don't know. Is that a wrap for? I think so. One? I yeah. think so. Um, what do you think? Uh, let's see who's there. You got Antoine, Tiana. Ooh, I can't see that name. <laughs> yeah, I um, can't see either. <laughs> you know what else is kind of corny? Well, while what what other? What, what's that saying you speak? Grinds my gears. You know what fixes my gears? People with weird names on Instagram. Can we have something that you can you can tell what it is? When I start giving away giveaways, I don't want to be like, uh, is that Sherlockin? Like, <laughs> giveaways. Okay. Oh yeah, giveaways coming soon. Giveaway next week. In fact. Nice. In fact, I think what we're gonna do the first giveaway we're gonna give away one of these, um, one of these shirts, the Love Cycling shirts. And I don't know. We'll find something else to give away. So. Yeah. I feel like we should give way more than clothes because, you know, sizes and all that stuff. So, ooh, what about a bike lock? That's a good idea. All right. So we're going to give away a bike lock and one of these. So what we're going to do is for each one of those, somewhere throughout the video, we're going to let you know to screenshot and post whatever ha whatever happening at that point in the video, and then we'll pick one of the people that actually screenshot and post it. Probably won't be too hard in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe later. Exactly. So. All right. So thanks I think, for watching. Thanks for watching. This is Bike Beers and Bros. We'll see y'all next week.